I just I just want to say <laughs> you got one more for me. This is the most problematic shit we've ever done. Congratulations, gentlemen. We're we're never gonna get any better than this. If anyone needs me, I'll be in the angry dome. I want to work this properly. If you were to ever lose your voice, I will build a your soundboard for you. Yeet. Wally, he's happy to see you. Uh, Is that enough stuff for you? Yeah, it's probably more than too enough. too much. It was rapid fire. You're too much. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 186 of the Camcast. Yippee ki yay! Yahoo! Yes, or whatever. Hoopla! God, this thing is already well, well off the rails before we even got going. That's okay. Spent the last 20 minutes just watching like YouTube videos. <laughs> Where we're going, we don't need rails. Uh, oh my god, that's a third movie reference. <laughs> yes, it, it is. It's quite well with what we're going to be talking about later. Oh my yep. god. God, anyway, I am wow. Mike, dear leader, doc taste, leader of men, herder of cats, so on and so forth. And I am joined, as always, to my right, by the one, the only, the... One and only professor of the ghetto arts. You're mine, our Uncle Radical. Remember, he's tenured, not licensed. We call him Scoots. It's Dave Raleigh. 1.21 shenanigans! Perfect. Thank you. Yes. Sitting over there. Apparently dying. <laughs> or whatever. I'm, I'm just zoning out a lot of the time here. Got to be perfectly honest with you. That's okay. Anyway, it is the chairman of the boards, Zach Lords present yeet perfect ahoy hoy oh oh shit if anyone needs me i'll be in the angry dome yeah. we miss you trent yes we do anyway uh, let me quick respond to a pepperidge farm if you uh <laughs> oh yes if you saw the uh the goldfish centipede on uh, our instagram mm-hmm. they're getting back to me so beautiful all right gonna tell them to email me <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I prefer to do this. You know, you can find us on all the social medias. We are social dot media slash cam automag. Oh, I don't want to do that. At cam automag on all of them. That is not how I want to get down. Do you know, you can find us on Google Play, Apple. Uh, let's see. What, where else are we? Spotify. Spotify. Oh my God, we are on Spotify. Yes, we are. We're pretty much anywhere you can download a podcast. Mm-hmm. And if for some reason we aren't, and you're mad that you're having to use one of the above mentioned in order to find us, you should hit us up. Let us know. Mailbag at camautomag.com. Or, again, we are at camautomag on all the various social medias. There we go. Uh, did you know that you can pay to have a good... Were sluts like that? I mean, kinda. I, where did I sign for this? Patreon.com slash Cam Automag. There we go. Oh. You can donate whatever you want. You can subscribe dollar level all the way up to 15 grand. We yeah. pretty much hand you the keys to this creative nonsense. Yeah, I'll just let you go. But you know what? $5 minimum gets you into the Cam Shenanigans page. That's where we do all of our shit posting. Mm-hmm. It's great. You also get uh, uh, bonus content and early release content yes so if you're a uh, five dollar patron or more you are hearing this episode on at least wednesday holy shit right wow Mm -hmm. wait that's a button wow there we go finally getting our money's worth out of this free thing that zach brought yeah buddy oh boy anyway so we did not receive any late responses to the question of course not it's all right it happens it happens sometimes you know Okay, thank you. Just ask me to Yeet. turn it down, Zach. It's kind of loud. It's rounded. Like, you're you're just going to keep not doing much. Just ask me to turn it down. I, I enjoy not doing much. We're aware. Yeah, that's just, that is, I mean, that's the title of your memoir. Not doing much. <laughs> That'll be my gravestone. Zach Lords, he didn't do much. <laughs> Quote, not doing much. Not doing much. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> then on top of my grave is going to be a dance floor and a urinal. You could dance and piss on my grave all day long. Oh, boy. Delightfully dark. I like it. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, wow. but uh, you guys did seem to enjoy having Devin here, so that, that was, was good. That was cool. Yeah. He's a nice guy. Yeah, he's a good dude. He's well, a good dude. Appreciate having him around, so 
Well, glad we could spend some time with him. And uh, speaking of guests, next week, Ooh. The, the OG Excitable Child will be returning. Yes. Because Exhibition of Speed will be dropping a new review. Yeet. Yes. They are going to be dropping a review of a Suzuki Swift Sport. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yep. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Oh, got it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Waiting on you. I'm so, mildly intoxicated. Back the fuck up. It's okay. But yeah, he's going to come on talk about that. Pitch uh, me, me. Talk about some other things. You know, some stuff. It's going to be a good, good time. I know he saw a uh, uh, Alpha Mero GTV6. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> there was a kid who worked at that O'Reilly up there. Same car. Yeah, that kid. He also had a uh, yellow NA. Hmm. Yeah. Huh. Really? Yeah, I think he does mostly autocross. We brought it to a NASA day once. Interesting. Yep. So. Yeah, you know, that that exact Alfa Romeo was at Cruiser Karma. Cool. I mean, it was cool until yep. he, like, ricer revved the shit out of it and then took off on the 33rd South. Yeah, he also didn't believe me when I came in there looking for stuff for the Supra. He didn't think that there were turbo Supras before the Mark IV. <sighs> yep. Wow. Yeah, I talked to the guy for probably about an hour and a half a day, and he's a really nice guy. Um, he didn't seem to be all quite there. Yeah, it's... As most people who own Alfa Romeos typically yeah. aren't. Yep. <clears throat> wow. Okay. So... We spent way too much time watching shit on YouTube. Yeah, we did. Goddamn, we got derailed. Wow. All that energy we had. We are... All burned out. Uh, doesn't help that we're eating pizza and drinking beer. Two things notorious for just mellowing you the shit out. Yeah. Oh, But something uh, yes. to be excited about. Yes, Zach. Excite us. I did something. It was really cool. What'd you do, Zach? A thing. God damn it, Zach. Yeet. I sat in a DeLorean. Woo! It was like super, super totally unplanned. <laughs> Okay. Like, what, what button were you supposed to push? I was going to hit the air horn thing, but he just dove right in. DeLorean! Yeah, there we go. Wow. He's going to hit, I sat in a DeLorean air horn, but then he just kept going. Oh, so. sorry. It's we, all right. We should have planned this better. Uh, it's it's going to be a lot better when we get a bigger table. We're and not, We're going to be passing notes back and forth? Uh, no, it'll be a lot better when we get like a bigger, taller table so I can be closer and, mm. you know... All that. Anyway, so I want to buy in... you a white whiteboard so you can write stuff and be like, "I'm just going to write fuck you a lot." I'm okay with that. Okay, so I sat in a DeLorean I'm trying to get back on track here, yeah. even though I derailed us so again. So you sat in a DeLorean, and how was that? It was really cool. Um, it was super unexpected. Didn't think it was going to happen. Like, just show up to some guy's shop who I knew had some uh, RX7 FDs, and he opens up the second garage door, and I'm like, "That thing is silver. That thing's stainless steel. That's a DeLorean." Hmm. Oh, all right. And so I turned to the guy, I'm like, Ryan, I act pretty adult around you, but can I please send the DeLorean? And he's like, <laughs> yeah, the, the, the keys are in it, just just don't don't break it. Keys are in it, just don't break it. Yeah. Uh, I want to know who's trusting enough to say that to you, of all people. He doesn't know me very well. Apparently. Yeah. Um, but no, yeah, I said it. I absolutely don't fucking fit in it. It's like <laughs> depressingly sad. Like it had like the the sheep uh, skin, like uh, seat, seat covers. covers. Yeah, Amazing. seat covers is the word you were looking yeah, for. Covers. Yep. yep. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, like I had the seat leaned all basically like a bed all the way back. Like I can see like maybe eight inches of windshield. Oh, so yeah. it's par for the course for a DeLorean. Yeah. yeah. It's like you're driving a fifth gen Camaro, yeah. Except some, I mean, except somehow less visibility. <laughs> I mean, there's things behind you. Yeah, yeah, like an engine. Yeah, so, yeah. The um, MR2 thing. The same thing though. I was kind of said because I've, I've thought, uh, so I've always liked DeLoreans. Mm -hmm. Getting onto our subject in the yeah. future, or we can get to. I've always liked DeLoreans. Like I liked them before I knew about Fast and, uh, Fast and Furious. I thought they were just like a cool wedge shaped like. Break. Before I even really knew about cars, I thought the car looked cool, and I liked it a lot. Was was there a DeLorean in any Fast and the Furious? Or you I saying meant back to, the, back to the Future. Oh, you know okay. I, mean. I, was, uh, I was thinking Fast and the Furious was your touchstone for, you know, thinking cars were cool and knowing oh. why cars were cool. No, that makes sense. No, I was thinking Back to the Future because I can't English. That's all right. I was going down a completely different route, and it's just, nope, you picked the wrong damn nope. movie. Yeah, it's fine. Good to know. But, but on the same note, yeah, I knew, like, 
I I really liked it before I knew really anything about cars. But um, I have always had a list of things I wanted to do in a DeLorean. I wanted to check the speedometer. I wanted to check the speedometer to see if it would if it's the eighty five mile an hour because. Granted, I could just Google that shit, but, you know, being Thank one. you, Zemeckis. I appreciate it. <laughs> I wanted to look behind me, to look for the flux capacitor. You know, it's not going to be there, but still. Right. Yeah. Do the thing. And then um, I, I wanted to find the DMC number plate on the, the dash or right. on the, the console. <clears throat> of course, I forgot to do all three of those fucking things because, you know, I'm sitting in a Because you're you. Yeah. <laughs> because but. you are our second excitable child. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, so that one it was really cool. I got I got a video of it. It's on uh, the camp shenanigans. So if you subscribe, you can see that. Yeah, there you go. That's pretty gangster. But mm-hmm. yeah, I hope to drive it in the future. It was a manual. I don't know if that was you guys could tell or not. Okay, I could not tell. That it's pretty cool. Yeah, you know what, what's actually surprising is I, I feel like I think it was like a sixty forty split manual and auto. Yeah, there's a surprising amount of uh, manuals. Hmm. No, I, what, what I mean by that is there's a surprising amount of automatics. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. I, I would have, I always, actually always assumed they were auto until more recently. Mm. And then I, I was like, oh, I, because like most are auto. They're just right. slush boxes with a pile of shit. Well, I mean, you got to mm. think it's also a transaxle and auto transaxles were everywhere in the 80s. Yep. yep. Especially so, attached to awful motors like the PRV. That, that PRV. Oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you got to think. <laughs> The, the three most laid back companies putting their name on that. <laughs> oh, Peugeot, Renault, and Volvo. Yup. Where's my line of Coke? Uh, on but, the mirror. But I hope to in open the Countach. <laughs> it's as good as Next gold, to the baby. <laughs> yep. Pull out the Countach mirror. But I hope to drive it at some point. You, you'll get an update if I ever drive it. There we go. I mean, are you going to be able to drive it? I'll fucking make it work, dude. Okay. <laughs> All right. Doors All right. up. I don't care. I'm I mean, that thing. I mean, that would be kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. Got to get you that Mattel hoverboard. Yeah. And then make sure this DeLorean doesn't light on fire. Well, actually, I'll do is I'll just throw my electric longboard in the passenger seat. Close enough. Yeah. I'll do the trick. We'll Good. make it work. Okay. Make it happen. We'll fun, make it work. Fun fact, all the tooling for the DeLoreans, like for the body panels, mm-hmm. they're at the bottom of the North Sea. Oh. Yep. That's inconvenient. <laughs> After the company went up, you know, went under, um, Ireland... Became owner of this damn thing, and they had enough. They didn't want to do anything with it, and nobody wanted to do anything with that stuff at the time. So they needed to anchor stuff in the North Sea, and what is really good, but big, heavy automotive tooling that was meant to just stamp out stainless steel body panels. Right. So they just said, "Fuck it," <laughs> and tie a chain to it and let it sink. Yep. So, there you go. Wow. Yep. Uh, fun fact, all the uh, Shelby Daytona Coupes almost met the same fate. Oh. Because when they were coming back after that final race season, they were last year's cars. Carroll Shelby had moved on to the Ford GT program. So, these were six cars without a home. Oh, wow. Yep. I, would, I would give one of them. And to think them how homes. much all of that shit is currently worth. I mean, a lot of the drivers were just like... They were scrambling to figure out how to buy the car that they drove. Right. You know, but eventually, you know, Ford just said, okay, we'll bring them back, but we're not keeping them. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. That's how one ended up in the Miller Collection, and then one ended up uh, having a woeful outing at uh, the Mecham Auction, because I wouldn't, if I had a car that was worth something and I needed to auction it, I'm not taking it to Mecham. No, no, no not the place where you can find like a Dale Earnhardt Senior Limited Edition Pontiac Grand Prix or some other bullshit rolling across the aisle. Right? Yeah, there's yeah. way better places for that. There's yeah, yeah, like there's RM on some other beats. Like yeah, like there are Jackson, whatever the Barrett Jackson, Barrett Jackson. There you go. Yeah, yeah. No, like it didn't. Interesting. In some documentary that got made about them, like that was the finale, and they're like, "Oh, this is a twenty million dollar car. It's it's better than the two fifty GTO." Because mm. it beat the 250 GTO. Okay. There are fewer of them. There are only six actual Shelby Daytona Coupes. Okay. Where there are like 50 or something of the 250 GTOs. Hmm. Yeah. So, like, it has everything on the 250 GTO. But at Mecham, you know, the place where conservative dads go to buy that thing they couldn't get their hands on. Mm-hmm. You know, that's where they go to spend over, you know, overspend on some shitty muscle car. Oh, Course what is it itself for? Uh, they had the reserve at like twenty one million dollars, and it didn't get anywhere near that. <laughs> it got to like nine, and then stalled the fuck out. 
Interesting. That's kind of embarrassing. That's, that's a lot of money to throw yeah. around. Yeah. Well, I mean, those... I mean, at the time, those 250 GTOs had never traded hands publicly. They were all private sales. Got it. But they were like $50 million cars. Yeah. Got it. You know? So... And what, the current highest auction for one right now is like 64 or some bullshit like that? Something like that, yeah. Good hell. Which, fun fact, collector car insurance, some of it is based on the most recent transaction of yep. that same type of car. So... That's how they uh, they uh, evaluate values. Evaluate values. There you yeah. go. Yeah, so if you just... So if you somehow lucked into a 250 GTO, like, you know, Grandpa died, you knew nothing about him, but then in a barn that he left you in the will and said you can have the barn, whatever's in it, voila. Hmm. Congratulations, you just got yourself a $64 million car. Wow. Yep. But and then I intend to be that grandfather. There you go. Yeah, you but if virtually one... are that grandfather right now with just weird, esoteric. Get off my lawn. Damn kids. <laughs> Oh, oh my! Okay, for those of you listening, <laughs> Dave he just pulled his flip flop off uh, and it waved it threateningly. That was adorable. You're welcome. Oh, Zach! Just reminds me of that one time I was moving cones from the old DXDT shop uh, for a drift event, and uh, their instructions to us was. Uh, the cones are off to the left. Please be careful of the blue car. Right? So we're walking into the DXDT shop. And there are Lamborghinis and Ferraris and, you know, Porsches. All, you know, the race stuff that they were typically known for, right? Uh, none of them are blue, mind <laughs> nope. you. None of them are blue. Uh, but tucked over on one corner was a Shelby cobra and had they not said you know referencing the mm-hmm. only blue car in this entire hall of insane shit. Like, yeah lamborghinis and ferraris and porsches and whatnot right had they not just simply referenced the blue car in all of this other stuff i would have considered that to be not a real cobra yeah but now i feel like that's a real cobra huh. yeah <laughs> and so i i was Within a couple feet of a real cobra. Oh. Didn't quite realize that. There were, if you want to go back in the cam archives, me and Trent, before the, you know, Larry H. Miller collection, the Miller collection moved to its new home, Mm -hmm. it was out in the museum at UMC. Oh, wow. And it was free. Oh. You could just walk in. Wow. And there was one of every generation of Ford GT40. Okay. So, including the Mark... Three, I think it was, which mm-hmm. was the road going car. Right, right. You had the Mark One, the Mark Two, the Mark Three, which is the road car. The first two were race cars. Yeah, the Mark Three, then there was the Mark Four, that another, you know, the race car again. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that's right. With just like crazy ass stuff for the time. Yeah, Got it. it. The, but, the, the Mark Two is what won at Le Mans. Yeah, we had, it was the one with the Gurney bubble. Okay. Yeah. So Beautiful. Yep. So nice. it was, yeah, because Dan Gurney is a tall fellow like Zach, and you couldn't, he couldn't stuff himself into that. Tiny ass car, so I can't wait to have a car with a Zach bubble. I mean, <laughs> listen, we can do that with any car. I've got a big hammer, so it'll be the Jeff bubble. Yep, my name is Jeff, or no, Eagle Eye, uh... the Eagle Eye Mark II. Yeah, you go. Yeah, it looks like a fucking Tupperware container. I'll yeah. do it. God damn it. Okay, cookie okay. sheets on top of DeLoreans. <laughs> Perfect. But yeah, no, like we went, me and Trent and John Gardner, the uh, the media relations guy out at right. UMC. Still, he's there. Awesome dude. If you talk to him, he's been around the block. Nice, you know. But yeah, we just walked around, and he's just like, yeah, if you need to move ropes, go ahead and move ropes. Ooh, yeah. So there was the Ford GT40, the one of the original golf liveried cars. Wow. One of the cars that Steve McQueen cut up to turn into a camera car for wow. filming Le Mans. Ooh. That was then put back together, and I think it sold at Sotheby's or something a few years ago for like an insane amount of money. Wow! Oh, that one? Yeah, that was the, out the there. green one. No, it wasn't the green one. It was the Gulf livery car. It was powder blue and orange. Like, I'm thinking of the, uh, of, of the green 250. Yeah, no, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, it sold it sold um, four and a half five years ago. Yeah, yeah. that Ooh. was that was out there. It, it was, was like awesome. twelve million dollars or some stupid amount. Like it was a crazy. Oh, yeah, so. Yeah, that was out there. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, there were just... I mean, he had a bunch of, like, early production Cobras. 
Wow. There was one he outbid George Lucas on. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. Where, where can we find this collection now? I don't... Uh, the rest of the collection was in Colorado, so it might have been moved there. Mm. But uh, I don't know. Uh, is that somebody in the Miller family that now owns that, or is that... It was... The Miller collection was, ended up kind of being a co-collection, so it was Larry Miller's stuff and then somebody else's stuff. Got it. Yeah. Fun fact, uh, UMC, or Miller Motorsports Park, was almost built in Colorado. That honestly does not surprise me. No, they had found an old track, like, I can't remember, it was like built in the 60s or something, they stopped, they ceased operation in the early 80s, Uh huh. so it kind of had gotten overgrown, but you could still see it, and they're like, oh, we want to bring it back, and people were looking at it like, you would be better off just building a new track. Interesting. Now, now you've got me wondering what track that was. Uh, I can't, I'll have to, I'll have to dig up my notes. Because John did, he gave us a whole, like, he told us so much stuff. Interesting. You know, like, okay. Yeah. Well, All like, right, those of you listeners at home, go ahead and do your homework. Yeah. And then he, and then mail us. Mailbag at camautomag.com. There you go. Also, one thing that he told us was uh, UMC was never going to be in Tooele. Interesting. They had done environmental studies. They'd drawn up plans and everything to put it on the west bench of Salt Lake County. Like, they were going to buy land from Kennecott, Rio Tinto. Oh, so you mean where Daybreak is? Uh, no, further north. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so where Magna is. Kind of between the two. Okay, got it. Yeah. So, so where Kearns is. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we'd be better off. But anyway, no, it was going to be right up on the mountain. So we'd have, like, natural elevation changes. That would have been be really, really cool, and I guarantee it would have already been closed down. Yeah. Because oh. of noise complaints. Oh, for sure. But, I mean... Because it basically would have been what um it's not what's what's the one in California Laguna not, not Laguna Willow Willow, Willow Springs? Springs yeah it would yeah. have been a lot like Willow Springs yeah would have you right yeah but yeah Salt Lake County never got back to them like they just straight left them on red damn yeah well, so you leave saw, the Millers on red they when, saw they did dot 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 a couple times and then blink yeah <laughs> like when arguably one of the most powerful families in Utah. When you just when you do them like that, and and real close to the Western United States, God, right? I mean, the number of Miller dealerships there are outside of Utah is uncanny. Yeah, it's like I, bought, I saw a commercial in when I was in Colorado this past weekend, mm-hmm. and they're talking about how many Miller dealerships there are. There were, you know, it was like eighty in like seven states or something like that. Right, right. I mean, they're huge in New Mexico. Yeah, yeah. there was one in Spokane when I went up there. Yeah, like they there's have... there's a Carl Malone dealership. In uh, Albuquerque as well. That's insane. Yeah. <laughs> but I also met one of the Miller kids. Uh, he came to my school. He's a fucking asshole. He was a dick. Well, I mean, that's not indicative the, of yeah. I mean, the, all of the Millers. Yeah. No, the, no. Yeah. The two I've met, uh, Roger, may he rest in peace, and Zane. You know, they're awesome people. Yeah, I can't remember which one I met, but he, he was just like an arrogant pile of shit. So I mean, that's just sounds like a grandkid. Yeah, that's he how, might have been a grandkid. Yeah, that seems to how how it is with a lot of. These kind of families, like I went to high school with Chandler England, the heir to the England trucking thing. Oh okay. wow, super nice dude. Yeah, like if his last name wasn't England, you wouldn't think anything of it. Hmm. Yeah, but apparently his little brother was ten kinds of a prick. So, huh? Yeah. So you know, like any kid with access to that kind of money, you know, it, like you're seventeen, your parents are buying you your first car. Money's like. Not that big of a deal. Yeah. Like, right. What are you asking for? Like, somebody would ask for something insane or dumb or whatever. Mm-hmm. He got a, it was a then, I believe it was a lease return, like 330i. Like an E46. Huh. Yeah. That's, that's humility. Yeah. Like, he was just a super, like, mellow dude. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, good on him. Yeah, I did not know that about him. I played, like, junior jazz with him when we were little kids. Hmm. Apparently my parents knew, but I didn't know until I went to high school with him. Well, okay then. Yeah. yeah and then at graduation, you know, of course, out after the ceremony ends, there's, like, two giant England trucks backed up with banners. Uh, of course there are. You know. Of course there Congratulations, are. Chandler. Uh, yeah. my, mine was, my graduation was, let's go to Chick-fil-A. 
Oh, mine was sitting in a car for like an hour and a half trying to get out of the fucking E Center parking lot. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, you're old because it was the E Center back then. Yeah. Because it was Maverick Center for me. I remember oh. when the Jazz played at the fucking Salt Palace. Oh. Pepperidge Farm remembers. Goddamn right. <laughs> uh, Speaking yeah. of which. Uh, yeah, so. God, I, I want to talk a little bit about my fun little Colorado trip. So. Do it, do it. Okay, yeah. So this last weekend, I was in. Colorado, Western Colorado, specifically, uh, we stayed in Delta, we checked out Hotchkiss and Paonia because my brother, uh, the high school teacher, basketball coach, is going to be moving out there and teaching at Paonia High School and coaching the basketball team out there. All right. Yep. Nice. And because he didn't want us, you know, like, thinking anything weird about, you know, like, not knowing where he's moving to. Last weekend, we all piled in the uh, the fucking family truckster, a.k.a. Mom's Nissan Rogue, and uh, trucked it on down to Delta, Colorado, a five and change hour drive from here. Yeah, it's not too bad. No, it's not too now, that, bad. That whole western slope area is actually not, not that bad. No. I mean, like, I, I've got friends in Montrose. That's that's where uh, Mike Rowan is. Yep. Yeah. He lives so, in Montrose. Yeah. Shout out to him. Yeah. Uh, my brother actually interviewed, I think, uh, in Montrose. But, oh, okay. Yeah, they didn't, you know, didn't think it was a fit. They didn't offer him. But, uh, yeah, so he's going to be teaching in Paonia. So, nice. Um, yeah. So we drove down, and so I knew very little. But when I got there, I kind of got a feeling. I'm like, okay, this is, you know, small rural town, you know, people working on farms, a lot of that. So I'm yeah. just picturing, you know, like... Beat up old American cars, trucks, you know, that stuff. Oh, God, yeah, there is a lot of farming out there. There is a shit ton of farming. Yeah. Uh, I, Paone is actually not small. It's not small. Not s- as small as I was thinking it would be. It's not small, but it's also not that big. <laughs> no, it's... It yeah, is. There's, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you're, you're looking, you know, 30 blocks wide and, you know, a dozen blocks tall. Yeah, like it is... I mean, it's right off of State Highway 133. How about that? It is a quaint little town, but if, if adorable. the car culture, if you can even call it that, there's yeah, anything both. like like small towns in Idaho. It's there's more Hondas than you think. There were I saw I only saw a couple Hondas. I saw a lot of Subarus. Really? Well, I like, mean, it's Colorado. I kind of like, yeah, feel like I see Subarus everywhere. Yeah, but it's like newer Subarus, like. Tastefully done, like seventeen, eighteen, nineteen WRXs and STIs. Huh? Yeah, that kind of threw me for a loop, and I really wanted to stop the family because there was an XT, like a Forester XT, for sale hmm. on the side of the road. I'm like, I want to make a bad decision. Yeah. Well, so like in Idaho, there are newer Subarus, but they're all Outbacks and Legacies or yeah. Outback and um, Foresters. Like I've been going to Idaho since I was two, and I've only ever remember seeing. One WRX there, and it was black. Yeah, like I was, I was thoroughly expecting, you know, that sort of thing. Like everybody, it's like going to be like utilitarian, or if it's a fun thing, it's going to be a Honda. Yeah, or like I mean, there were a, there was plenty of like well done like older four by fours, you know, so like K five Blazers and shit mm. like that. There, there's a lot of the good, the good old iron out there like that. Oh hell yeah. But one of the first things that I saw when we stopped and we're kind of walking around, mm-hmm. full on fucking mini truck build, like hydros and everything. No shit. Huh. Yeah, there is one in every community. I, I wanted swear. to, like, and I don't mean just like you know thrown. Like it was well done. Like from what I saw, the paint looked fucking legit. Like proper. Yeah. Like I wanted to flag this dude down. Nice. Yeah. Well, so that was kind of like, um, where the fuck were we? We were somewhere in Wyoming, just middle of nowhere, like, like two gas stations type, type town. Yeah. We're rolling out as an R32 GTR is rolling in. Of course. And I'm like, my mom's like, why are you freaking out in the back seat? I'm like, do you want to just roll by us? Yeah. And she was like, no. What? It looks like a Camry. Wow. And I'm like, that car has traveled around the world to be here. And you call it a Camry. That's what you call JZXs. Yep. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> Sick Avalon, bro. Oh, man. This is a JZX 90 Mark II. <laughs> rabble, rabble. 
Rabble. <laughs> Rabble. Why are you saying Cressida wrong? <laughs> <laughs> it's a Cressida. It's a Cressida. <laughs> it's a Cresta. Cressida? 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 No, Cresta. I feel like we're saying the same thing. <laughs> Let's try to see what's his bucket at. Uh, at... It's John Voight's Cressida. <laughs> <laughs> god damn. I understand that reference. Oh, god. Speaking of, okay, a tangent on the tangent. So, on the way back, we were... <laughs> okay, here's the thing. The sound effects of that... <laughs> Made it so <laughs> worthwhile. That was perfect. We all watched that just in detail. I didn't watch it. I just heard it. I was just waiting for it to roll into view. And lo and behold, was, I was not disappointed. 10 out of 10 would recommend. God damn. Perfect 5 out of 7. <laughs> yep. Uh, <laughs> cowabunga it is. Cowabunga <laughs> it is. <laughs> anyway. Um, so, well, real quick. So we, we stayed at the Days Inn in Delta. And the first night we were there, uh, some people tried to get into my parents' room because apparently the front desk completely forgot that they had rented that room. Well, okay. Yep. So, you know. And then that whole night, I'm just sitting there, just up, just looking at the door, just getting ready to say cowabunga it is and just wail on some dude with a fucking lamp. <laughs> where, 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 where's your aluminum, aluminum bat? <laughs> I didn't have a bat, unfortunately. This but... is my gun. Holds up bat. <laughs> <laughs> I'll uh, warn you, I have a paddle, and <laughs> I'm not afraid to use it. God. Oh, oh! so we were headed out to... Um... <laughs> I don't even want to know. All right, then we're going to hold. put a pause on that. So oh, that the... was a good one. Well, but don't worry, we'll we'll get back to it in a minute. So the thing I wanted to talk about was on the way back, we listened to my brother's podcast on the way down. So it was a lot of Den Levitard show replays. On the way back, it was time for me to shine. Oh, dear God. So there was an episode of the Cracked Podcast that we listened to that was TV shows and movies that were almost complete disasters, but weren't. So they talked about, you know, shows and movies that, you know, they were going to do something catastrophically dumb. But, you know, a note or somebody saying something saved them from doing dumb things. Like, there's going to be an episode of Cheers where Sam had AIDS. Um. <laughs> wow. And the <laughs> head writer was all on board with this, but he said, the specter of AIDS hanging over Sam's head sucked the fun out of the episode. I could see that. <laughs> you don't say. Huh. But no, there was an episode of Seinfeld where they were going to do a bet. The bet was was either Jerry or Kramer or somebody was going to bet Elaine that she wouldn't buy a gun. Hello. And she <laughs> And here's the thing, she bought the gun and then there were just like some horrible lines in there, you know, like she would be waving it around Jerry's apartment and she'd say, "Oh, you want the Kennedy?" and she'd put the gun in her mouth or something like that. Oh, and then the B plot wow. was, yeah, Kramer said he slept with a super hot stewardess. You no, know, Kramer. Yeah, Kramer. Yeah, Kramer did that. Hashtag and, just Kramer things. And George didn't believe him. So the end of the episode was George dragging everybody to the airport because apparently he figured out that the stewardess was going to be there. And Elaine would be there, and because how Seinfeld wraps up, Elaine would be at the airport with a gun. I don't know why he wouldn't believe Kramer. Right? But Kramer <laughs> had Uma Thurma's number at one point. That's like, I mean, it's Kramer. Yeah. It's Kramer. Cosmo Kramer. The Cosmo Kramer. It's yeah, the right. Kramer effect. Yeah. He is but a this... loathsome, offensive brute. Yet I cannot look away. Mm. <laughs> but, so this episode, like, they had it written like they did a table read of it they had every like all the extras and everything cast they were ready to shoot it and then at the end of the table read julia louis dreyfus said i am not doing this okay well i'm glad and that's she why didn't. they stopped it how far in this the season was this like i can't remember it was one of the earlier seasons i think really but yeah. still still well established but not yeah like not, not credible <laughs> yeah but it was one of those just like what the fuck it's definitely interesting. I mean, that's that's certifiably Elaine. 
Yeah. yeah. But I think that's a little too far that's off like, the Elaine. Yeah. That's like... Oh, edgy, that's too Elaine, I guess. That's like edgy college improv shit. Yeah. 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 Oh, God. But, um, yeah. Well, and on the drive down to Colorado, I kept, you know, I kept thinking, like, what would be a better vehicle than this Nissan Crossover? Literally anything other than a Nissan Crossover? Yeah, pretty much. So I'm just like, well, you know, why not something like a Charger? Right. I mean, we were talking about Chargers recently because yeah. my girlfriend picked one up. Yeah. So I'm just like, well, yeah. I- I'm like, well, I don't want an RT, God damn it. The only one I've ever really been in has been Trent's SRT8. Right, and, and I mean, the, the SRT is just just enough a cut above yeah. to where it's it, for the price that you're going to pay for one now. Yeah, so I started looking, and I sent Dave one. Oh, God. <laughs> yep. 11 owners. 10, th- like, under 10 grand. It was, it was pretty bad. Well, let me see if I can like, back up. I mean, it was... It was like 120,000 miles, but like the thing that fucking threw me was 11 owners. Like, like I, I kind of want to know if that was just because it had been traded in a whole bunch or, or what? what? I mean, it's a beautiful car. Yeah. In, in but, Phoenix. Yeah. So, but I mean, that's just what, what's wrong with this now, car? I wonder if it was even originally that color. I highly doubt that it was originally that color. I mean, it's, it's a handsome respray. Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, like, door jams match. Yeah, like, it's not bad. Like, somebody did, like, you know, did the whole nine on it, but no. So that will be, that will be another, you know, we'll revisit the road trip car question thing. Mm-hmm. But Of so. course, I mean, I, I was really glad to see this because these are the wheels I'm looking at putting on my girl's car. So oh, yeah. that, that really helped. Yeah, but, uh, go. but yeah, God damn it. I'll look forward to ruining another road trip episode. Here we go. Sick. Well, all you got to do is just pick the wrong car, Zach. Okay. Which I think we all will do. But once we got down there, like, we were driving around, and I'm just like, yeah, no, that fucking boat is not going to do well in some of these spots. Just because it is tiny, like, two-lane farm roads. You know, where it's just like, yeah, nah, you know. I I don't know. I, I like, I kind of like hustling her car around. I mean, it will, she'll boogie, but at the same time. I also feel like I need to have a horn coming out of the center console so I can yell down to, you know, the engine room. Fall ahead, port! <laughs> Fall in line! <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yep. So, anyway. <sighs> so that delightful tangent was brought to you by CamAutoSwag.com. Oh, holy shit. Yeah, yep. hey, you know, you can buy all kinds of cool stuff. You can buy the Mount Cammore t-shirt. Mm-hmm. You can buy the Understeer to Victory t-shirt, which is our seasonal shirt for another couple weeks. Yep. Thank you, Zach. I just bought one. There you go. Beautiful. Yep, I'm going to try and get that thing swapped out so we can get back on this old shirt of the month thing, but mm, uh, no I, guarantees. Shirt, shirt of the season, I think, is more appropriate. Yeah. Sure Gives of, you guys a chance to buy them. Shirt of the every other month. Yeah. There we yeah, go. We'll, we'll do that. We'll do that. So, But anyway, yeah, camonaswag.com. Go ahead and help us the hell out because, uh, you know, we could use it. And listen, our stuff's awesome. You're kind of supporting this stuff. Yeah. I wore the uh, the Pinto Go Boom shirt, and some dude at uh, Liberty Park complimented me on it. Very nice. Yep. So glad I'm the only one who owns that fucking shirt. Yeah, I should have bought one. Ah, I, I might steal the the art from you and then pay you royalties for it. I mean, that's something we can talk about. Okay. Anyway. Wow. So there we go. I want a sticker. We can, like, yeah, we can talk about that. Anyway, so... We have an honest to God question of the week. And Holy that, shit! And that is brought to you by my laziness, which prevented me from doing any sort of shopping on Sunday when we got home from Colorado. That's okay. Didn't want to do that shit. And also, Steady Broke clothing. Wow, SteadyBroke dot com, Steady dot Broke on all the social medias. Mm-hmm. Check out what they've got. They've got dad hats. Yep. They've got sweatshirts. They've got t shirts. Mike is currently wearing his Broke AF t-shirt. The OG. Yeah, I've got me a Depresso t-shirt. You guys can pick up some of these handsome shirts as well. And you know the best part about buying things from Steady Broke is? Because they're supporting us, they've given you a coupon code. Yep. It is CAMAUTO15. You type that in at checkout, it gives you 15% off the entire order. Just because you're broke doesn't mean you can't live your dreams. Steady Broke clothing. There we go. Boom. Oh. Wait, that's a button too. Yep. There we go. You know, I I love how you used my 
my Lamborghini cell phone potato photo Yep, as like the thumbnail for this week. Listen, I'm not going to lie. There have been a lot of potato photos that have been for the question of the week. That's okay. Yep. They get the job done. That's okay. I mean, I, I just, I'm proud that I was able to frame that appropriately enough for you. It got the job done, my man. I love it. It's really all that we needed. Love it. iPhone X for the win. Damn right. Ah. Anyway, so we asked you guys, because Zach met his hero car, we wanted to hear what is the one hero car you would like to meet. Oh, man. Yeah. And, oh, man. And I specifically said one because, I, I mean. We could drag this trench all night long. Like, this could be a recurring thing, but it ain't going to be. Right. You know? So, uh, yeah, I just wanted it to be one because we all have a fucking list and it's all ten miles long. So yeah. So, we're not going to get into that. Mm-hmm. Absolutely not. So, oh, holy shit, hold on. I need to go back. Real fucking quick side note. Sup. Da, 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 da. Go, go back. God damn it. I think uh, Madison got that. Madison got the speedster, or the, the, that, the, the slant back. The dank ass hard. Oh, oh really? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, she got that for her her, uh, her black LE. All right. Good. Yeah. Good. yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Good job. Good pickup. Mm. Come on, work for me. Shout out to you, Queen of Rad. Queen of Utah Rad. Damn fucking straight. Yes. All right. So. Okay. A bunch of people commented on this. So, but Beautiful. Pretty, but before we get going, guys, what is, well, I mean, we already heard Zach, so. I, I guess it's up I'm, to you and me. I mean, if Zach has another one. Maybe he comes back to me at the end. Okay. Um, the first gen forerunner that doesn't have floorboard rot. Does that exist still? Yeah, you're talking Probably. about imaginary shit. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> Unicorns! If anyone needs me, I'll be in the angry dome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Fucking perfect. All right, so, Dave, uh, it's me and you right now. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, one of my hero cars has been for the longest time... There's a bug on the fucking screen. It's just <laughs> tripping me out. It's been there for like an hour. I know. I've been watching it. Oh, Will he follow God. the pointer? I don't Probably think not. so. Probably not. Come on, little dude. <laughs> anyway. Oh, oh, shit. oh, oh, come on. Over here. Over here. No. You God damn it. He, he's, he's got a very limited window of. Oh, well, he got scared because the box changed colors. Oh, no. Anyway. Come, come on, little man. Um, It's a very specific Penske Indy car where they exploited a loophole in the rules where you could still, like, you could have some crazy, like, Indy only engine. <laughs> and what their Indy only engine was, was this, like, two valve Mercedes V8 <laughs> that they just kept hurling boost at. Okay. Like, it was just like. It was just so much quicker than everybody else around Indy, and I just think, like, that would be <laughs> just... This little guy's just going for it. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all right. He's making right to the bottom. Oh, nope. He's making a turn. <laughs> oh, He's oh, coming God. back. He's coming back. He's going north. <laughs> but, yeah, like that, I mean, I always love the old Penske cars with the Marlboro logo, you know, the livery on them. Yeah. Yeah, so that would be... Okay. Like, specifically that car. All right. You know? So. That's a hell of a. Yeah. That's a hell of a choice. Um, I mean, you guys know that I have an unhealthy obsession with the Lancia Stratos. Oh, yeah. And that's, that's, I mean, that's a car that I probably will never own or see in person. I feel like there are maybe two in North America. I would say there has to be more than two. And uh, I know, I I know of at least two, not personally, but just through the interwebs. Uh, like, interesting. I, I think, know there was a red one in Texas that sold a couple of years ago. Yeah, I knew that one. It and was an imported one. There was another one on it was a YouTube channel. Somebody had one in the U.S. Well, oh, I I know Matt Farah drove one on on his. Yeah, I I wanted to call it a one take, but it might have been. That one of weird, his other features yeah. that he did, he, where he drove a, a rally prep one. I believe it was in Florida. Can so, I yeah, I, I think you're right. There, There's probably a couple. I think that's probably it, though. It's probably two. I think I think there's probably a couple more, but it's just one of those, like... It's, it's like hiding in somebody's private collection. It's a collection, yeah. 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 like that. It's one of those, like, when it sees the light of day, holy shit, that's been here for how long? Right. Yeah. Exactly. I, I mean, a lot of the 
the Delta Integrales have been that way too. Yeah. I mean, like there was one hiding in Chicago forever and now there's a couple of them here. Yeah. Yeah. You know, including that works car that's always out at UMC. Yeah. Who the, the dude is from Chicago. It might be the same shit then. Yeah, <laughs> like, who knows? Well, yeah, like, I only know that because the last time the Hawks were in the playoffs, he brought that thing out we were talking hockey. Beautiful. So, anyway. Beautiful. But, yeah, no, so I, it's just going to be one of those things, like, as soon as some people need to, you know, get to a place where they need to liquidate some assets, we're going to see a few more come out. That, that may very well be the case. I don't know. Like, there was, I think I the mean, one in Texas sold for, I want to say it was probably... Around the two hundred thousand dollar mark. That was was that the one on Bring a Trailer? Yeah, it was yeah, the red was, one on BAT. Yeah, that like an insane amount of money. Eh, which I mean, honestly, almost a quarter mil probably seems fitting for such a low production car that yeah. has such heritage. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, you still can buy a handful of them for what you could buy the, the new the one. new quote unquote the quote unquote, yeah right 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 air quotes thank you there we go um. Yeah, you know, so, but, but that I think is, is going to be the hero car for me. That, that is a car that never even came on this continent. Yeah. And people have had to do some, some major heavy lifting in order to even get one here. Uh, and, and so that's, that's honestly probably it. I mean, I, I wanted to say Lotus Esprit, but there's enough of those around. I mean, oh yeah. You love one someday. I, yeah, probably. When you're um, going to pay and spray, one of the little pay and spray car washes in Murray, we'll see one. Oh, the the gray first gen. Yeah, the guy drives the hell out of. I yeah. see oh, him dude, all the yeah. time. That guy blew uh, past me one time hard. Dude, I see him all the time uh, by Ninth and Van Winkle. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, I, that's I, usually I take Ninth yeah. to yeah. from work, and yeah, yeah he just hits yeah. that corner. All that's the where time. I saw him the first time. Yeah, there is that um, that little paint spray thing just north of the sports mall. Right. Yeah, yeah. and the exactly. sports castle. Yeah. yeah, and that's right around where I saw him. Yeah, so, like yeah, yeah. yeah. Last time I saw him, it was him. Mm-hmm. NA1 or NA2 pop-up NSX. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then I think there was some, something else like fucking insane rolling with them, but I just saw Very those cool. two and I'm like, wait, what? Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. No. And so that, you know, like, I, I really like the Peter Stevens redesign, the X187 or sorry, the X180. <clears throat> um, so, you know, that's ni- late 1987 to 2004 is yeah. when they killed the body style. Um, and I've only seen a handful of those in person, you know, I've seen two my whole life. And uh, actually, a couple weeks ago, I went to the Garage Grill for the first time with my girlfriend. And yep. there is, you know, Mr. White's yellow facelift V8 Esprit Turbo huh. on the four post right there as you walk in. Damn. And we got the table right next to it. And <laughs> she kept commenting that I, I was spending more time looking at the Esprit than anything else. <laughs> well... I'm a I'm a man who knows what I like. Yeah, sorry. I love my girlfriend very much, but I also love the Lotus Esprit. <laughs> However, <laughs> anyway, uh, so I guess I get to break the rule here. Yeah, and have two. Yeah, I guess so. Like the DeLorean, yeah, it's a dream car for me. I don't really want to own one, and if I did, it's just a garage. It just sits in the yeah, garage. It looks a, pretty. It's just a thing that's there. Yeah, but for a car that like, like if I got to pick one car. It's going to be a weird one, but I really want one um, for a couple of reasons. But it would be the Koenigsegg CC XR. Okay, that's not that's not a weird one. Um, I mean, that's the superior Swedish vehicle. Yeah. Um, the kind of gig 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 gig. But I like I want the one that the Top Gear tested. So it's the I don't even know what you call that. It. It's like a silver. It's like a, the beautiful silver with the dished five holes. Mm. I know the one of which you speak. Yeah. But it's a truly beautiful car. And then, like, it's, like, one of the only manual Conan Sigs. So, like, you get twin supercharged V8 manual. Okay. With all the weird quirks and features. You get the insanity. Of a Conan Sig. Okay. So that'd be mine. All right. Okay. I like it. Yeah. I did we get down. Did we get some hit on Instagram? Uh, no, I just, uh... Joey sent me this Formula Derp Instagram story, mm-hmm. and it's just... Oh. Yeah. Okay. Slutmobile for sale by Matt. Matt Van Kirk is selling uh, uh, his ex-girlfriend's car, so... It's spray-painted? Nope. Oh, dear God. Yep. 
Oh, dear God. It's something that, <laughs> yep, Matt Van Kirk doesn't want to see it because, uh, you know. Because ex-girlfriends. Yep. It looks like the new Smock Mod. Damn. Anyway, on Instagram, let me just <laughs> double Thanks, let me just double check on Instagram wow. real quick. I don't think we did, but, uh, you know, don't want to leave anybody out. That's all right. That's all right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and knock off a couple of these on the Cam Auto Mag uh, page. Hold on real quick. Oh, uh, did you get something? Yeah, Sam Babbler. Hey. I know the sketchiness around John Hennessy, but I really want a Hennessy Hammer Wagon. Oh, my God. The right. Hammer Wagon? Do you not know? I know of the hammer wagon of the Mercedes hammer wagon. Do, do you do you not know of the Hennessy hammer wagon? Is that like the arrow wagon? Hold, please. Am, am I being enlightened? Yes, you are. You I, you I, are I about to changed. be enlightened. Prepare your anus. You are about to be enlightened. Um, All right. <laughs> that, there you go. Hennessy hammer wagon. Oh, it's a CTSV. Okay. Yeah. yeah. God, yeah, the little bug is still just chiefing along on that screen. So it, uh, just l- going, me, going, going, going. That's where he's going to die. Uh, supercharger upgrade or well, let's just that's it. You know, honestly, I do not know the method of force deduction because so the CNC is supercharged, right? Factory, yeah. right? So it's only putting down six hundred fifty-eight. Why is so. it that much compared to stock? Stock is what four ninety. 510? Something like that? Something like that. Oh, that's another car I thought about getting, the CTSV. I mean, the first gens are surprisingly affordable. I yeah. know. I was looking at them as well. And, you know, even better, the five lug swap is really easy on those. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're four lug factory? They're six lug. Oh, they're yeah. They're six on 114, like the Viper. Yep. Yeah, that's weird. Yep. Yeah, really awkward. I don't know why that was a thing. It in was the early two thousands. It just seemed like we need something strong. Trucks are strong. Ergo, we'll use truck parts. That must have been the case. Because, because yeah. But but anywho, I mean, if yeah. Last time I looked, you could five lug from a C five if you didn't want the parking brake, or from a C six if you did want to be able to use your parking brake. Right, and you, fuck parking brake. And uh, if you would rather just swap bearings. Uh, the non V spec uh, CTS hubs bolt in. And you Makes just sense. redrill your rotors and use your stock calipers. There yep. we go. So there's that as an option. There we go. As well, I feel at this point I could go ahead and afford the C6 slug. That thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I think. Yeah, I feel, well, I mean, those parts are actually surprisingly affordable. C6 parts are still cheap. Yeah, like that's. You well, know, I mean, C5 parts are still cheap. It's just C5. the cars that are going back up in value. Yep. So. C4s are going up. C3s have been going up. C5s have plateaued. Or I guess bottomed out. There we go. And are working their way back. Yep. Up. You know, much like I'm still waiting on the E90 M3s to come hit my floor. Still waiting on those C6s to also do the same damn thing. You know, Bucky Lang is convinced that the E9X chassis is going to be the next drift car. I mean, And I feel it if they made more of them in manual transmission. I mean, it's going to be the next drift car in the sense that it is a good chassis that is available in abundance, but not like... I mean, it's, you're going to see more of them just because there's more of them out there and they will get fucking cheap. Well, it's just like the E36 and E46. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, I mean, honestly, they're they're a pedal swap and an LS transplant away from being a really good drift car. Yeah. yeah like that's... I mean, hashtag N54 life. But, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, it's like you'll you'll see like... The Beamer guys just winced. Ah. Uh, well, that's okay. I'm right. Anyway. <laughs> let's get back to this. Ah. Uh, All right. Do you want to uh, tag team the uh, the prop, the cam proper? Y- yeah. Let's let's go ahead and blast this out. Okay. I'll... You you get first. Okay. Me first. So, uh, Scumbag Scotty, the Japanese Super GT Toyota Prius, because it's awesome, hauls ass, and yet it's still sort of a Prius. I mean, that's the by one shape. That, that's when they like lowered and put a cage in, right? Uh, they did more than that. It's legit a Super GT. Car. Yeah. So, like, the GT... I'll do some looking up. The GT500 has the same power plant as the Toyota LMP1 car. Yeah. Yep. So... Pretty great. Mid-engine, it's pretty fucking awesome. Probably the only Prius I enjoy. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Speaking of awesome-ass Toyota things... Mm, Yeah, here we go. Brandon McConkey, Mr. Crazy himself. Yep. uh, The Toyota GT1. (laughs) 
I've met a few of my heroes, and I'm honestly not as excited as I used to be to meet more. This one, obviously, would be pretty rad, though. So, fun fact about the Toyota GT1 and all of the GT1 class road cars. Right. So, this was back when the FIA still had the rule that it had to be able to carry luggage. That's right. At least, like, a suitcase. I recall this one could fit a suitcase if it were within the bladder of the fuel tank. you had to take the bladder out of the fuel cell, and then, yeah, it'll fucking fit a suitcase. I like that. Yep. I like that. Yep. That's that's like (laughs) boost bumper levels of... It's, it's rule beating. It's Smokey Eunuch pulling up to NASCAR Tech in a car that's supposed to be completely devoid of fuel. Right. Getting through Tech and then getting in the car, starting it up and driving it off. Getting it up and driving away. They said yeah. the tank had to be empty. They didn't specify the lines had to be empty. <laughs> and didn't he say there was enough fuel in those lines to drive Tallahassee and back? Yep. Uh, Jesus. Uh, Smokey, we said dry about that. <laughs> anyway, uh, David Arlano, uh, Jaguar XJ220. Beautiful. Yep. Uh, Sawyer to Hart, simple. 1979 BMW M1 Pro Car. Ah, oh, man. That wow. livery. Dude, there is, uh, on Speed Hunters, there are photos of a bunch of them at the 77th Goodwood members meeting. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Go ahead and look at that. Lose your mind. It's almost pornographic. It's in Almost? I think some of those needed to be blurred. Oh, this is, right? This is not safe for work. NSF dub. Oh, so hard. Anyway, uh, <sighs> last week's guest, Devin Creasy. Guys over here breaking rules. Yep. God That's damn okay. it. So I'm only going to read the one, man. Uh, Toyota 2000 GT. Nice. Yep. Uh, even, a... even though he also said Lancia Stratos. Yep. No, he didn't. In no it, particular it's order. Not, not in there. He... he broke the rules. Yeah, it's okay. Only I can break rules. It's okay. I just wanted to give him the shout out Yep. for the honorable mention of the Stratos. Thank you. <laughs> I just like you get me. You understand. I like just that he also put in the eight six black limited edition car. Yeah, that's. I mean, it's an interesting thing, indeed. So anyway, moving on. Uh, Chance Hales says an original GT forty. There we go. I mean, Mark one, Mark two, Mark three, Mark four. I think he probably. I mean, probably the Mark one. Uh, he no, would, if it's Mark him, three road car. No, if it's him, it's probably a Mark two because that's the only one he's going to be able to fit in. Chance is a tall drink okay, of water. Yep, nope, that's yeah. him. Yeah, that's fair. He is he's Zach levels of height. Yep. Yep. So ooh, oh, Alex ooh. Danger Yunkin, uh Delta HF. Yes, he's, please. Yep. And uh David Orlano chimes in. We'll have one here at Lux relatively soon. Beautiful. Uh, guys, can can we get in on that party? We'll be fine. Yeah, please. We're not gonna do anything. We're not I gonna touch anything. A little bit. Goodness. We'll bring a rag. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, Dave Kazarian, uh, this is not a surprise to me. Nope. Uh, he says, never meet your heroes. 959. <laughs> also. <laughs> then, let's see. Uh, Luke Dreyer, one of the OG super fans. This might be a cop-out. Nissan R390 road car. Part of it is because of where it's where it is stored. The other part, because I know I can't have it. Now that, that's the one where they made the one, and it's blue, right? They made two. Made two? Okay. Yep. Because that was, you couldn't just make one for homologation, per, you had to make two. Okay. And Nissan and so, owns them both. Of course. Yeah. Because Nissan. Yeah. Why Why the hell would you, why would you spend that kind of money to then just sell it to some asshole? Right. Exactly. Yeah. So, anyway, over in the shenanigans page where we're still asking, have you paid for WinRAR yet? I mean, <laughs> when will you, we not be asking the, that? The joke's on all of you. I've been using 7-Zip for far longer than I knew about WinRAR. I so, use Seed Zip. Get on my fucking level. No. Wow. All right, wow. moving on. That's a button. If anyone needs me, I'll be in the Angry Dome. The Angry Dome being Cam Shenanigans' Facebook group. Holy shit. Ah, uh, transition. Wow. Anyway, so this is the first place I asked the question. And again, let's uh, let's let's kind of tag team this. Okay, uh, Dave, yeah. you gotta go first this time. Yay! Uh, Super fan Brandon Kuhn says, "For me, it is an orange late seventies Trans Am. I know they're objectively garbage, but I've wanted one since I was a small boy. And and you know, I cannot fault you in nope. the slightest. No nope. seventies TAs are where it's at. Burt nope. Reynolds mustache and all. Damn fucking straight." Uh, Chirp uh, threw in a G body SS or a GN would work too. Yes, please. G body. Damn right. Uh, Matt Barker 
everything LMP won every year. LMS was here at Miller. He was there. Beautiful. Yep. God, that was a fucking set. Do you know our ALMS race got replaced by a fucking like a street circuit race in Oklahoma City? Further proving my point that Utah can't have nice things, I am not surprised. I'm just surprised that it was Oklahoma City. All I mean, the fucking places. OKC has a lot of street action going on. I'm just saying. I mean, a different kind of street action. I mean, Dave. Every raceway has a straight. Damn right. Why can't we have nice things? Because Utah. Because you touch yourself at night. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Your palms are too hairy to hide. <laughs> anyway, Dave, if you would. Uh, while Zach is slowly dying. Yeah. Our other excitable child, our original excitable child, says... Uh, <clears throat> and then he links to uh, the story he wrote about that one time he met his hero, which was a 964-911. Right. Pick another one. Pick another. <laughs> Cowabunga it is. Yep. Oh, uh, boy. Uh, we got a few more on the on the roster there. Oh, shit. John Walker has a good one. Hell, yeah, he does. Oh, my God. Okay, so there was a one of the movie trucks came up for sale recently. God damn it. Now, here's, here's the thing. And some of you guys might know what I'm going to be talking about based solely on how I describe it. So... There is no longer an engine in the original location. <laughs> and you can see in this picture in the air how it has all the gussing to the axles. Yeah. Right? Um, there's a roll cage tucked very neatly inside that cab. You can kind of see it through the window. You can kind of see it through the window, right? You can kind of see there's like a net and stuff like that, right? Yeah. The engine, transmission, and transfer case are under the driver's seat, uh, like underneath like the, the seating area and the front of the bed. Okay. For more even weight distribution to get exactly those shots right there. All right. And the vehicle in which I am speaking of, because you guys are yelling at the screen right now, or yelling at whatever device is playing this you're right yelling now. in your cubicle and everybody it, thinks you're fucking insane. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> the truck from the TV show The Fall Guy, the square body GM. Oh, yeah. I believe it was a GMC specifically. Should have been a high Sierra K20. I mean, that's kind of what it looks like. Yeah. So. I haven't even explained that. I, I want to be a mechanic for like 70s and 80s. Like, Would that have not ever. been the coolest shit ever? Yeah, like, okay, so we need to get a shot of the truck like this. Now put the engine underneath the seat. How are we going to do that? Because every time we send that thing in the air, it's it just. nose dives. Yep. Yeah, it nose dives. And how do you get a high Sierra K20 to fly level through the air? You either A, fill the ass with concrete, or B, put a small block under the bench seat. Hey, Dave. Yo. I know where I can yes. find one of these. Can we do it? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. Wow. Okay, can we just cut up the plow and just shove it into the bed? Fuck no. it, dude. It's the same truck. Well, well welded God up. Damn. His other choice was a gorgeous Italian wedge, mm. but uh, he's 6'10 and that ain't happening. Yeah. That's okay. Unfortunately. I feel right. you, dude. I feel you. So... Uh, ben Allred, uh, I'm just going to generalize my decision by saying any 007 car, especially of mm. the classic James Bond era. I know what you're talking about. DB4? DB5. I remember Sorry, the, DB5. I remember those land lot, land yachts from Living at Let Die. James Bond did a black exploitation film. Yeah. <laughs> was it, uh, it was the first Pierce Brosnan movie that was, uh, DB7, was it not? Yep. Okay. Wait, yeah, no. Because that was, was when I got into... Uh, James, James Bond, 007. Yeah, that was... The DB7, I believe, is what it was. Actually, I, I take that back. I had Goldeneye, but the first movie I watched oh, yeah. was whatever he was driving a DB7 in. Yeah, that was one of the later ones. Was it one of the later? Yeah, because that one was... I mean, he was in the uh, the DB5 dueling... Oh, with that was his po- first. Doing, yeah, that was in the Goldeneye. It was uh, the, first scene, the first driving scene is that. It's him in the DB5 and somebody in a... 348. Right. And then they're driving through Cuba in a BMW Z3. Ah, okay. Yeah, so this is that weird time where Bond was a BMW guy. I because mean, money. Yeah, the next one he was in a... Because marketing. God, the next one he was in a fucking, like, 750 IL. Yeah, it was very... It had a very transporter vibe to it. It's, I mean, it was... It My was name's Jason Statham. <laughs> uh, before that, though. Wow. Yep. Anyway... Okay, uh, A.J. Glassmacher, 
says I'm going to have to go with the Dodge Turbo Interceptor from the Wraith. The Wraith. Bum, bum, which is bum. an amazing selection. That puck is still there. Still going, baby. Come to me, my friend. Come to me, my little angel muffin. All right. Uh, he was originally going to go with Kit, but then he remembered this one. Yep, I like it. Yep. I like it, especially, you know, when the hood, you know, the hood. The qu- thing. Air quote. Anywho, opens up and and it's just like glowing light and you're just like, oh my God, what is going on? What's in the case? Wow. Uh, anyway, so Chirp has a little bit of story time. Mm-hmm. Long before that tool Ken got one, Ouch. this was one of the top, one of the tops for me. When Trent and I made our Vegas, California trip, we stopped in at the now closed Las Vegas Car Museum. Yes. I believe there was three or four in there along with an XJ200 and some other pretty rare and awesome vehicles. There were. Specifically, the white evolution of yes. this vehicle was for sale. Oh, shit. At the time, it was listed at $114,000. God damn. A bargain in today's prices. Mm-hmm. Let's see. The Jag XJ200, Vector F40. The R390 would also round out this list, but we're not doing lists. Uh, and the car he is specifically talking about is the Ford RS200. Yes. Yes. That that was going to be their Group B competitor, but then Group B folded. Yep. Because it kept fucking killing people. Still a cool-ass car. Oh, hell yeah. That thing dominated uh, Rallycross for, like, a decade. <laughs> anyway. Uh, good old JDM Joey. Joey Harrington. An OG himself. Mm-hmm. He says, totally misunderstood the question because I'm a fucking mongoloid. That's okay, we still love you. And I pressed enter too quickly because I could fuck up cereal. It's okay, we've all had that Homer moment. I mean... I love you, Joey. I've lit shredded weed on fire, I can't hate. (laughs) Anywho, uh, literally any genuine midnight car. Though, since I have to pick one, I'll pick the in real life Devil Z. Which is an S130. Yep. It is a A 280ZX. Yep. Yep. Yes. Beautiful car. So I, I would, didn't know about midnight cars until Joey posted something, and then like I fell down the rabbit hole. Yeah, yep. That's it's how you have fucking, to find yeah. them. You have to go down the rabbit like hole. A, yeah, tits I'm, first in order to find oh, yeah. this stuff. I was it was really Christmas, and I was sitting in the, the parking lot of the Idaho Falls Mall, and I'm sitting there scrolling and reading and reading, like just mm-hmm. falling more and more and more in love. So yeah, thanks, yep. Joey. Yep. Yep. So I mean, that's what he does for everybody about everything. Oh yeah. So, and finally, ah, shenanigans, uh, beautiful. Dan Chalinski. Top of my list is the 1970 Plymouth Superbird. The Ooh. first time I saw that ugly-ass spoiler as a kid, I was mesmerized. And the story of how they came about made it even better. Uh, now, see, I don't know the story of the Superbird specifically. I know of the Charger Daytona. It, um... It was... It, it, oh, yeah, it's just to, to beat NASCAR. Well, and I believe the Plymouth was they wanted the king back, but he would only drive a Plymouth. He wouldn't drive a Dodge. I see. Makes so, sense. And there Makes was sense. there was a lot of like a lot of testing. It was like, do not go full speed. Do not go full throttle. They 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 are watching us right now. Reserve that for race day. Yeah. And so nice. there there was like apparently um, competitors had planes flying and doing speed tests on them, to seeing like how fast these cars were going to see if they were having any competition issues. Oh, interesting. Yeah. There are a bunch of fun stories from NASCAR. Like, GM had a motor that they just said, yeah, we don't know what the fuck this thing is about. Okay. Like, they had some people, like, that was their whole thing. It was just like, listen, we need a new motor. You engineers are going to get us this new motor, but you're not going to tell us a goddamn thing about this. This is the last time we ever talking about it. Don't build us that motor. Wink, wink. Don't build that motor. And then it Got showed it. up in a bunch of cars and it was outrunning everybody. Interesting. Yeah. And NASCAR asked you, all right, what's up with this engine? I don't know. Don't it, it, was, it was in the car when it was in the trailer. That's all we know. Yeah. I mean, that's, I guess. Interesting. Like it was some weird combination of just stuff. Also, can can we just like vote to make this, you know, motion to make this a thing? Can we start calling vintage Hemis Angry Domes? Yes. If anyone needs me, I'll be in the Angry Dome. Perfect. I'm, I'm done for tonight. Okay. <laughs> Zach's done. Joke, huh? But you know which Zach isn't done? Zach Turnage. 
Oh, yeah, he's got the best answer. Damn fucking straight. Herbie. Hands down the best. Yup. Here's the thing, though. No. Which Herbie? There's a correct answer for this. There is. Yep. The 2004 remake? Get out. Good night. See you guys <laughs> next week. God damn. Uh, oh, that crippling disappointment. Yeah. That's there okay. No, there there is a certain Herbie that is the right answer. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> Just what? What? When, what so, the shit is going on right now? So okay, so we're watching uh, Ryan Celsius specifically the smooth sounds, lo-fi hip hop and funk radio, chill, study, smoke, work thing live stream that he's got going on, and the clip right now is a Simpsons clip where Homer has a monocle, a top hat, and a suit, and a sash that says Senator. Marge is dancing in a bikini, and I will explain this. So this is from the episode where Homer gets the handgun. And he goes into the Quickie Mart, and he's got it out. And oh, is this the daydream? Yeah. So, okay. like, Apu's just like, you know, please don't shoot me. Take whatever you want. And Homer just walks out with a hot dog, and he's just like, I or no, he's, he's still in there. He's like, well, what? Maybe I should rob the Quickie Mart. And he imagines himself, like, you know, as a senator in front of some crazy house, and Marge is dancing. And then he's, and then he snaps out. And he's like, all right, I'm gonna rob the Quickie. Put your hands up, and he's already in the car eating a hot dog driving home. Nice. Yep. Beautiful. What's the next word? Dough? Yeah. Dough! Thank you, Dave. You're welcome. Anyway, so <laughs> there we go, folks. <laughs> That's it. Uh, holy shit. Yep. Okay. Uh, you know, you can find us at Cam Automag on all the social medias. Yep. We are everywhere. Social.media slash camautomag.netscape mm-hmm. forward slash HTML dot APS. Yep. For your long form rants or whatever, uh, mailbag at camautomag.com. Mm-hmm. Also, if we you can't find this podcast and you want us to be someplace, that's where you go. Or if you have a shirt design you want to send us, yes, go ahead and figure out how to credit you properly in a way that is not exploitative. <laughs> but seeing as how nobody's buying these shirts of the goddamn month, please change that, people. I did. Good. There we go. I'm yeah. so glad. Uh, anyway, we'll make that happen for you. And speaking of the podcast, you can find it everywhere you get your podcasts, but specifically Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Play. Mm-hmm. Like, rate, review, subscribe, share it with your friends. Mm-hmm. Lock everybody in a closet and just blare this. We've exactly. got 186 episodes of it. Make them love it. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yep. That's really... <laughs> <laughs> yep. Listen. Yep. You'll train them. Uh, anyway... Just- do it! So uh, this weekend is NASA Utah Round 2 on the East Course. Ooh. I'll be out there. Very nice. Uh, it says it's going to rain, so there we go. Okay. It's happened. I got believe, early season rain. I believe this Sunday I am going to be, I believe, up in Antelope Island with Gavin. Oh. Driving a thing. Oh. Ooh. A thing not of this country. A milk trolley? Oh. Likely so. Hot uh, damn. <laughs> he he says the engine is behind me. And that is all the information he was able to give me. Okay, so it's Gavin, so it's safe to assume Porsche. I mean... It could be a Lotus. He didn't say it was in the ass of the car. He just said it was behind the driver. It's going to be an AW11. <laughs> I mean, I'm cool with that. But anywho, this is, this is a birthday surprise. And he okay. gave me the choice to spoil it and let me fangirl or to surprise me the day of. Ooh. And I asked him kindly to surprise me day of. Mm. There we go. So I also do not know what I'm going to be driving. Gavin knows. Well, and we'll be doing things. Well, all right then. So, so we will find out next week what it is you have been driving. Oh, yes. Actually, yes. I probably won't even. I I don't know. Well, I guess Gavin will be here. So yes, he will. If, be. if he if he lets me spoil it, he'll let me spoil it. Yeah. Because I'm sure it's a thing for exhibition of speed. I'm sure it's going mark. It's going to show up on Instagram. It likely will. Yep. It's going to be a hashtag at night. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> anyway. Zach, you got anything this weekend? Okay, shakes his head no. All righty. Well. I have a, might be working on my shop space, but that's well, all I can think of. Yeah, well, there you go. I mean, that's something. But, uh, all right. So, there you go. So, for episode 186, I have been Mike. I've been Professor Shenanigans. I've been Zach. There you go. My name's Zach. Just... Do it! Wow.